welcome to all of you, wherever you're watching or listening along from. Today we continue in our I Believe series. As we think about um, the next thing that helps us on our journey of um, being a Christian, of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, today we're thinking about prayer. That is something that uh, many folk around the world maybe do, and we all maybe at times might shout out a cry of help in a time of difficulty. But actually for many of us, we find it a struggle to pray. And so I hope today will be an encouragement to you as you think and reflect upon what it means to pray and how to pray, and perhaps more as well. And so please do stick around for that as we think about these um, big things together. The song this morning is, um, It Is Well With My Soul. It's a version um, that uh, the praise group at my home church um, back in Scobay, the church that I grew up in, um, for many years, um, a version that they put together um, and uh, were willing um, for us to use it today. So I pray that you'll be blessed by this as we sing together. It is well with my soul.
morning father god lord our god how majestic is your name in all the earth we may not have thought enough of you during this past week so forgive us lord we may have turned away from you distracted doubting or fearful of the things that are happening in the world today lord Touch our hearts and minds today. Draw us back into your presence, where we can find your love, your peace, your grace. Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. We thank you for the beauty of your creation that we have experienced during this lockdown the beautiful coming alive of nature during this wonderful spring weather has been an amazing experience. How the birds sing their praises to you in the early morning and the late evening. As the noises of the world have been stilled, we have heard them. As we have been sheltered in our houses and gardens, we have been changed. Some of us have relaxed and enjoyed this time of less rush and trying to achieve things in the busy world. Some of us have become frustrated by the changes. Some of us have become fearful, depressed and worried about finances. Lord, you are the one who can touch us all in these different and different and difficult times. We come before you today and ask that you will help us to see you more clearly, to love you more dearly, to listen to you more patiently, to walk with you more closely and so to talk with you more often. May the words of our songs help us to truly worship you. And may the words that you give to Andrew touch our hearts and minds and so draw our souls closer to you. Challenge us and change us today. O Lord, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, reading from verse 5 to 13 on prayer. But when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. When you pray, Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need to ask him. This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. Thanks be to God. So this morning we're thinking all about prayer. Now prayer is one of the things that almost I think every human being does at some point in their life. 
And yet I think it's also one of the most difficult things for Christians to do. When I said that thing about um, everyone um, prays at some point, there's been lots of surveys done throughout the world that show that um, people, regardless of their faith or lack of belief, um, seem to pray, um, at least cry out to God at times of distress, perhaps at times of pain. All of us maybe doing an exam or walking into a job interview or in some other traumatic experience have said help or we've uttered some kind of cry to something out there. But Christian prayer is more than just um, praying to whatever it is out there. It's a relationship with a personal, intimate God who knows us and who loves us. Prayer is not just us speaking to God, but it's also about building this relationship between ourselves and this loving, personal, intimate um, relationship with this God that we know and we know also knows and loves us in return. So prayer is important. Prayer is something that helps us to grow in a relationship with God as well. And so that's why we want to focus on that today, about the whys and the hows of prayer. Prayer is perhaps the most important way of us growing in relationship with God as well. If there's one thing I want you to take away from today's service, it would be this, is that you have a loving, personal Father God who knows you and who loves you. And he desires a relationship with you. And prayer is a way that that happens. That you have a personal and um, loving Father God who cares and who loves you and who desires a relationship with you. And prayer is a way that that relationship is built. Think about all the other relationships that you have. You have to communicate with other people. It might be through um, phone or through email. It might be face to face. Hopefully in these last week or so, as the lockdown is slightly eased here in Scotland, you've been able to perhaps see one or two other folk um, um, from the, your door or in your garden as well. And uh, these relationships are important to us. And also our relationship with God is vitally important as well. And so I want us to think about why we should pray and then how we should pray. So first up, why do we pray? Well, we see right throughout the scriptures from the Old Testament into the New Testament, we see plenty of examples of God not just suggesting we pray or inviting us to pray, but in fact instructing us to pray. He says, come to me and bring your prayers and your petitions to me. And that is when God instructs us to do something, that's something that we should do. Even if we're not quite sure about the, the hows of it and the, um, we don't understand all the ways that prayer works, we're still instructed to pray nonetheless. And so if we're a Christian and we're not praying, then in fact the Bible would suggest that we're being disobedient to God by not praying because the Bible tells us we should be praying, not just invites or encourages us, but tells us to pray nonetheless. The second reason for prayer is that God wants us to join in with his plans and his purposes for our world, our communities, for our lives and, and for creation as a whole. Now we know that God rules over all things. He's the ultimate creator of everything and he continues to rule over the stars and the planets, the galaxies and in fact our lives. But nonetheless he invites us to join with him in this relationship of recreating the world into this perfect paradise that he says is going to happen one day in the future as he brings around his perfect kingdom. So God is in charge, he's sovereign over all things. But also the scriptures point out that he's a loving father and loving parents, and many of you will be parents, know what it is to invite your children to join in with you in some kind of task or activity. Now even though that you're almost certainly far better than your child or more competent than your child at um, doing a task so often we encourage and invite our children to join in with us. It might be making a dinner, it might be doing something in the garden, it might be selecting the groceries or the, the shopping that we need. Why do we do that? Because it's a delight to watch our children grow and flourish and watch them mature in that relationship with us and also learn what it is to live in this world. That's something similar to what God invites us to do as well. He wants us to experience a relationship with him and he wants to encourage us 
and invites us to flourish and grow as we join in with God in his plans and purposes for the world. They're not our plans, they're God's plans, but he invites us to join in with him because children are invited into this perfect, wonderful relationship with this wonderful Father God. The third reason for why we should pray is perhaps the one that many of us might automatically think of when we are maybe asked, why should we pray? And that is that there are results of prayer that happen. For instance, if I ask God for stuff and sometimes it seems to happen and these things seem to come into being. I see amazing things happen from time to time as well. Now don't misunderstand me, I'm not saying that miracles happen every day, I'm not seeing um, some of the things that we see in the Bible happen in front of me all the time. In fact, very rarely do I see mir miracles happen. But nonetheless, I see things come to pass that I don't think would have happened if I hadn't prayed or if others hadn't prayed as well. Somebody once says, and um, when they were asked about, well, why should we pray? He says, well, when I pray, coincidences happen. When I don't pray, coincidences don't happen. In other words, the more he prays, the more things he seems to see um, happen before his eyes that just he wouldn't have expected otherwise. At the start of the series, we looked at how God the Father is infinitely powerful and yet intensely personal. Just ponder upon that for a moment. If you had an infinitely powerful God who loved you and who cared about you, and he invited you to ask him for anything, what kind of things would you ask about? If his desire was to see you grow and flourish and become all that you could ever be, all that he had made you to be, if you had a God who could raise the dead, who could turn um, water into wine, who could make thousands of meals appear out of a little boy's packed lunch, what would you pray? Or ask it another way. Why would you not pray if that is your God? Because that is the God that the Bible reveals. A God who's personal and who wants you to grow and flourish. But also a God who's powerful, who can calm the storms, who can raise the dead, who can change lives. Why would we not pray when we have such a God? And that God invites us to come to him and bring our prayers and our requests. The God who's out there is that very God. He can do the seemingly impossible. So prayer is really, really important. And I think it's something that all Christians struggle with. And I include myself in that as well. Prayer is something that I don't think any Christian in the world has ever quite mastered. I've read many things of people who um, are far better at prayer than perhaps you or I are. And even they would say, you know what? They've not made it either. They might spend hours a day in prayer and they recognise that, you know what, they've still got lots to learn about building their relationship with God. But we've all got to start somewhere, and then I'd encourage us to start today if we've not done so before. Or if we are praying, then to um, think more about how we can build on our prayer life together. So I want to give you some tips and some um, practicalities around prayer. I'm no expert, but hopefully some of these things you'll be able to put into practice and build on your prayer life. Now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, we thought about reading the Bible and the importance of God's word and why we should read the Bible. But and as part of that, I said that um, finding a time and a place to read the Bible was important. And that's also the same with prayer. Something that we should do is try and find a regular time and place in which we pray. Of course, we can pray or read the Bible anywhere. But I think if we've got a routine, it's much more helpful to us because then we can stick to that routine. So it might be that you get up early in the morning. In fact, that's what Jesus did. We see quite often that he gets up early in the morning, goes to a quiet place and prays and spends time with his loving Father. So I get up quite early in the morning naturally anyway and that's when I find it easiest to pray. Perhaps when I'm out walking the dog as well, I might send up some prayers to God as well. But you may be thinking, well, how then do I pray? What's the formula for prayer if there is one? Well, there's no set way to pray. A prayer can be as simple as a deep yearning for God to change a circumstance when you cry out help. Or it could be a, a long winded prayer, I guess, one that goes on for many minutes 
and perhaps as well. But sometimes I use a pattern for prayer that I've used for many years and I find it quite helpful for me to do so. And it goes um, by using a, the acronym ACTS, A-C-T-S. This is a way that I find helpful. And the acronym stands for, A, the A stands for um, adoration. When, I, when we declare who God is, it's not saying thank you to God for what he is, but declaring who he is. If we might say, Lord, you are you're wonderful, you're kind, you're gracious, you're powerful, you're sovereign, you're king, you are the good shepherd, you're the Lord over all. Declaring the majesty, the wonder, the glory and the goodness of God. That's the A. The second thing is the letter C and that stands for confession. Confession is when we say to God and express to God our, our sorrow for um, doing things and expressing things that don't match up to the way of God. When we sin, in other words. And so we might um, say, sorry God for something that happened. We might um, say and ask God for forgiveness for some situation um, that took place or something we said or something we thought or something that we didn't do or say that we should have done so. So you might say sorry to God for, for lying or for stealing. You might say sorry to God for not honouring him and how you've spoken or how you've spent time with other people. You might ask God for forgiveness for and plenty of things that have went on in our lives. Things that you know about and recognise and things that maybe you didn't even recognise and say, sorry God, that there are things I've done in my life today that I don't even know I've done wrong. Forgive me for them nonetheless. The third thing, the letter T, is thankfulness. When we express to God our thankfulness for all the good things in our life, um, all the things that um, God has given us and put in our path for the relationships we have with people, for our roof over our heads, for food in our plates, for water in our taps, for the hundreds and thousands of things that we can thank God for. The last thing is the letter S, and that word is supplication. So a long, fancy old word, but it basically means asking for things. So that's the thing that we perhaps most recognise about prayer, when we ask God to change a circumstance to intervene and do something. And so God invites us to pray and ask God to change and intervene in circumstances, whatever that might be for yourself, for your community, for your family, or indeed for the whole world. So prayer is really important. Prayer is something that I want to encourage you in. Prayer is something I want to um, not just encourage you, but implore you to grow in if you can. There are going to be some resources that will be um, mentioned in the YouTube um, description list below. Please do look at them and um, hopefully they'll be helpful to you um, in your prayer life. I really encourage you to pray. But one thing I want to mention um, here is that uh, if you've been passing through Bervey in this past week, you might have seen the Try Praying banner um, outside our church. Next to our Try Praying banner is a little Perspex box um, with the Try Praying books within it. If you are uh, not used to prayer, if you're new to prayer, then I encourage you to go to Bereford Church and pick up one of those little small tri praying books in the Perspex box attached to the railings. Take that home for free, it's our gift to you, and, and that will help you to um, work out what prayer is and how to grow in prayer. As it says, try praying. We encourage all of you to try praying, to grow in prayer, because it's how you build a relationship with this personal God who loves you, who knows you, and who wants you to flourish, and who encourages you to join in with him. Prayer is a way that you build that relationship with God. So why don't you try praying today and build this relationship with this personal God who loves you and who wants you to join in with him. Try praying. So be thinking about prayer, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to use that ACTS um, acronym that I mentioned about the adoration, confession, thankfulness and supplication. And I'm going to encourage you to pray. Because sometimes we think that oh, it's just a minister that prays. Now, yes, that's part of my job, but also part of my job is to help others to pray, to grow in this relationship with God. And so that's what we're going to do here and now as we listen and watch along. I'm just going to encourage us 
And to go through those four sections, I will start us off and encourage you to make your own responses in these four sections together. So let us pray together. Let us pray and I'll help us and guide us through this prayer. Let's pray. So first up is A is adoration. So let us um, declare um, who God is. Let us declare um, the wonderful things about God in this moment. May you declare who God is to you, his goodness, his beauty, his wonder and his glory. Secondly is confession, where we say sorry to God and recognise that, um, yeah, we sin, that we mess up, we make mistakes, but that God is also a loving and kind and gracious God who forgives us when we come to him with repentant hearts, when we recognise that we don't match up to what God asks for us. And so maybe bring before God now your things that you've done that you shouldn't have done, things you've said that you shouldn't have said. Or things that you should have said or should have done and you did not do. Where you haven't loved someone or loved God in the way that you should have. So confess your sins and recognise that our God is a forgiving God. What are you thankful for? Use this moment to thank God for the blessings in your life. Some of them might be huge and big things. Some of them might be quite small things or seemingly small things. I once heard this challenging statement. If you only had today what you thanked God for yesterday, what would you have left? So thank God for everything and anything for your health, for your family, for your friends, for your breakfast, for what you're going to have, for meals later on today, for nature, for creation, for a thousand other things. Thank God that he gives you lots of things, that he is a blessing and he loves to bless. And finally is S for supplication, where we ask God for things. We see throughout the Bible people asking God big and bold and brave things. What could you ask God for today? What could you ask God to change in your life, in the life of a family member, or perhaps in our world? We've all seen things in the news this last week or so that have been challenging to us. What do you want to pray for? And ask God to intervene and change in your life and in the life of our world and our community. Ask God. And so, Lord, we bring before you all of these prayers. We bring before you our adoration. We bring before you our, our sins and we ask you to forgive us for them. We give you thanks for your goodness and your love towards us and for the many practical and physical and emotional blessings we receive each and every day. And also we bring before you these things that are on our hearts, some things that worry us, some things that challenge us, and Lord, we ask you to intervene and for you to do it according to your will. And since we looked at the Lord's Prayer a little bit earlier, let us um, say the Lord's Prayer together. If you're watching along, it will be on the screens. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for yours is a kingdom. Yours is the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us close together in song. CH4, number 466. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong, a perfect plea. So we pray that you've been blessed by this morning's service and uh, we pray God's blessing upon you and your loved ones and uh, we pray that you would continue to pray, that you'd be a prayerful person, a prayerful warrior and uh, yeah, if we as a church can, can bless you, can help you in any way, whether it's with your prayer life, whether it's um, in uh, any practical ways with um, grocery shopping or prescriptions or anything like that, then please do get in touch. We are um, a community church for our community. And uh, so may you be blessed this week as you continue to stay safe and continue to look out for another. Until we meet again, we'll see you soon.